Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another writing class for medicine. And we've got a very interesting case today, everyone. We've got a bit of a plan today. We're going to do a discharge to a nurse. Uh, it's a slightly different focus. Okay. So just to begin with, we'll start with a little question for everyone. That's my question, everyone. What type of referral letters are common in OET? What type of referral letters are common? Who do you write to? What? Um, thanks, Neve. So we got referral to um, gastroenterologist. Yep. Could be to an endocrinologist. Yep. That, and what sort of cases are those for that one? Are they, if you're writing to an endo or to a gastroenterologist? So endocrinologist, is that diabetes? Neve says yes. Right. So endo, diabetes. Yep. What about a gastro? Yep. Could be psychiatric. That definitely happens. Mental health. Yep. Key. Patrick, yep. Rheumatologist, Mishek, why would you write to a rheumatologist? Is that for rheumatoid arthritis? What other conditions would you choose to do that on? Could be to, yes, neurologist is a common one, absolutely. Neurologist, very common. Occupational health, yes. So that could be, um, and even I, I might go for occupational therapist, yes, yeah, so or we'll go for Allied profession, physio, OT, dietitian, etc. And the neurologist is for like uh, lupus. Yes, I've seen that one. S L E. Thank you there. What about neurologist? Must be some kind of traumatic brain or some type of brain injury. Okay, bunch of different scenarios, aren't they, everyone? Yep. Okay. So does anyone have a preference, the type of letter that you want? And of course, we haven't mentioned here, but it could be um, some type of, uh, it could also be a discharge. It could be an uh, urgent admission. And so discharge to GP, it could be an urgent admission, or it could be, referral to a specialist yeah bunch of bunch of different situations but that sort of covers it i will actually I'll move the gp because discharge to someone we don't know who could be to anyone all right urgent admission to ed so it's kind of good in the way that you if you know the ballpark of the things you're going to get on exam day well that's a great position to be in isn't it once you've got that sort of basic ballpark of who you could write to. As soon as you pick up your card on exam day, you have a look and you go, aha, okay. I have referral to a psychiatrist. I know how to organize and write this. Or if, if I have an urgent admission, I'm going to do it this way. Those sorts of things can really help you. All right. So today we're going to do something a little less common, but very much something that you can face. And we're going to do medical referral letter to a nurse. Okay, let's look at our case. This is referral to a nurse, everyone. Few questions for our planning. Who am I writing to? Answer these questions, everyone. Who are you writing to? Nurse manager, straightforward. Next question is important. What is the current health condition? What's going on? This is a, a summary. What's going on with her? Needs assessment, yes. Needs assessment. Injured and traumatized, yes. And what type of assessment? What does she need? And would you say 
in terms of her health, is, is her health declining or is her health improving? Is her health deteriorating or is she recovering? Hmm. Everyone says deteriorate at discharge, at discharge. No, you're not deteriorating. I, I kind of agree with Katha. She's recovering everyone, recovering from burn injuries. Now that's an important concept to grasp when you write. Because if you can say, write a sentence like this, Miss Kim is recovering from burn injuries, then you've captured the current situation, all right? So that is a good sentence to write in your introduction because you, if you use, and particularly with ING, because it's an act of recovering, right? I'm writing to refer Miss Kim, a 25 year old waitress who is recovering from burn injuries. That sort of captures the situation, doesn't it? Okay. What's the purpose and reason for writing the letter to the nurse manager? Why are we writing to the nurse manager? Let's be specific. Why are we writing to the nurse manager? Wound care, right? That's a very important sentence, isn't it? Wound care. That's what we really need. To request burn wound management following a domestic violence incident. That's a bit of background there, but wound burn wound management, that's it. So that's got to be a focus. Now, in that history, what information can be summarized? We've seen three hospital past hospital admissions for domestic violence incidents. We've got today's visit. We've got a police report. We've got her current situation in health. And we've got our, her discharge requirements. So what information are you going to need to summarize to keep within that required word limit. What are you going to summarize? The three visits to the ER? Yes, those earlier visits, they, the past history, yeah. We're writing to the nurse manager. That detail, you know, I have, we often say that those things are done and dusted. Not important, they're done and dusted. Not going to help the nurse. Okay, so those past hospital admissions, the social background, um, probably not super relevant to the nurse, right? Um, the history of abuse and the police case report can all be summarized concisely, right? Or even left out, but we'll leave that up to the writer. Uh, what information can be expanded on and, pa and paraphrased? Remember, we're writing to a nurse manager. The last visit. Yep. How the burns came about. Yep. How the burns occurred, that's important, exactly. And the degree of severity, the last visit. So everything you did, your assessment, your treatment. Yep. So the final hospital admission and the discharge plan. So we're going to expand on those. We're not going to summarize. We're going to expand, but we will be paraphrasing. All right. So that, how does that sound like a plan, everyone? And you should think about this for any case you get. If you have this basic idea in your head, how you're gonna do it, then you're gonna be able to write with good purpose. You've got the request, the final part of the letter, everyone. Uh, again, we've got two sections. I'm gonna give you time. I'm gonna disappear. I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to write this. So do get active on your keyboards, type in your version. We'll do a little bit of correction. Time's up, everyone. Well done, Ehab. She's due for a follow-up appointment at the Outpatients Department, OPD. That's a good one, Ehab, for a follow-up at the OPD on um, this day. Excellent. I like that is due, uh, not is due to, Ooh, is due for. I'd accept that. She's due for a follow-up appointment. Uh, let's have a look at Susanna. Mrs. Oh, she ain't married, Susanna. Miss Kim has a follow-up appointment in the outpatient. Now, I would put capitals here, and, in, and I would just put in the outpatient department and use capitals there. 
department on this day. Do we have any number ones? Anyone writing for number one? Got it. All right. A few more coming in. Ahmed is writing. I would be most grateful if you could provide Miss Kim with the appropriate daily wound care for a wet and dry gauze. Excellent. Please note a follow up appointment is arranged. Oh, you're combining the two, which is great, but is arranged. No, can't say is arranged. I need, give me present perfect here, everyone. Give me present perfect. And I, you can say after a week, but I would actually say has been arranged for, um, because it's a specific an appointment, I would, uh, you can say in a week, but because it's an upcoming appointment on a specific date, then I would actually write that date in in this case. For past, we can say she was admitted one week ago right? She was admitted three months ago. She underwent surgery yesterday. But when we're talking about appointments, that's probably something that a specific date is useful. Does that make sense? And thank you, Ahmed, for that one has been arranged. All right, excellent work, everyone. Uh, Mishak, let's have a look. Ooh, we got a request here. Let's work on that one. May you assist with the wound care and monitoring of injuries. This phrase is not really good. I'll give you a hint, everyone. See this one, may you assist, right? That's not really focused on the patient, is it? And that's focused on the, on the nurse. But we don't want to focus on the nurse. We really want to focus on the patient. So we can change that. Um, we can say here, instead of you, we can say, Miss Kim requires, what does she require, everyone? Let's turn assist into a noun. Miss Kim requires assessment. No, you've done that in the hospital, Susanna. Assistance. Yeah, there you go. Miss Kim, now we're patient focused. Can you see the difference? Miss Kim requires assistance with her wound care and monitoring of her injuries. Lovely, that, that's medical writing. She will need disinfection of the wounds, excellent, followed by wet and dry uh, dressings twice per day for seven days. Wow, this second sentence is excellent. So we only had to adjust that first sentence. That's really good. Very nice writing. Mishek, beautiful work. And Mujtaba's having a go on that one. Miss Kim, oh, Miss Kim, use an apostrophe. Miss Kim's nursing management includes close monitoring, wound care, and uh, a wet and dry gauze. Good. Um, but I would just say a bit more detail there, Mujtaba, um, just to flesh it out. So I would just put twice daily for seven days. Just give that specifics. All right. And we have done. We're done. All right. And here's my sentences, everyone. Miss Kim requires follow-up of her injuries, including wound cleansing, with a wet and dry dressing change two times daily for seven days, as well as close monitoring for any complications. So again, that was original language, like the healing process or any complications. That will really value add to your writing. And if you need a 400, you definitely will need to do that. Second one, please note, Miss Kim has a follow-up appointment scheduled at outpatients on this date. All right, so that's the final sentence. And then we get our letter. Body of the letter. So here it all is, everyone. It's a tad long, 211 words. Um, but that's fine. That's in the 10% rule. We have homework. We have homework. Are you ready for homework? We did homework a couple of weeks ago. We have another homework session, everyone. What is your homework? What I want you to do 
is write the same letter, the same case notes. But this time, we're going to write to a clinical psychologist. So the same case. How does that sound, everyone? <laughs>